Hello everybody, it's time for Monster Monday. Today we're gonna to talk about the Azer. They are beans of fire. All right, if you're following along at home, this is on page 22 of your Monster Manual. So the Azer, um, a lot of people and DMs who maybe are thinking about adding in elementals, probably the first and easiest thing to go with is some kind of earth elemental. But really any elemental, fire, wind, water, whatever you have, um, can be very simple or can be a major component of your overall adventure or of your campaign. So I wanna take a look at the Azer because I think they're a little bit different and maybe a little bit unique from other kind of elementals or primordials in that sense. And I think there are some really cool ideas for how you can implement them into an adventure. So uh, Azer are natives of the elemental plane of fire. They are master crafters, expert miners, and sworn foes of the Ifrit. In appearance and manner, an Azer resembles a male dwarf, but this is a facade. Beneath its metallic looking skin, an Azer is a being of fire, which outwardly manifests in its fiery hair and beard. I like this for a couple reasons. Number one, it makes them less primordial. Um, like, you know, a swirling thing of fire or air or water or earth, rocks coming together. That kind of seems very more primordial in, in a sense, in, in elemental terms. But these seem to almost have a culture. Um, and with that culture, you have a lot of potential story hooks for how to integrate the Azer into uh, a campaign or an, into an adventure. So one important distinction is how they are made. So Azers don't reproduce. They are each crafted from bronze by another Azer and imbued with a portion of the crafter's inner flame. Each Azer is sculpted with unique features. This crafting process limits the growth of the Azer population and is the primary reason that these creatures remain rare. Volcanic Dwellers. Azers dwell in a kingdom on the border between the elemental plane of earth and the elemental plane of fire, a range of mountains and volcanoes whose spires rise as a series of fortresses. Beneath mountain peaks, under volcanic calderas, and amid rivers of magma, Azers extract gleaming metals and glittering gems from the earth. Squads of Azer patrol the passes and tunnels of their realm, fending off the salamander raiders whose Afrit masters order strikes against the Azer kingdom. What you have right there is one primary source for an adventure or potentially a whole campaign. If you kind of pick up on this conflict between the Azer civilization or their culture and the Ifrits, that could be a component of a campaign, a whole campaign. It could also just be kind of a, a go-to adventure. I like to think of anything though as being malleable and adaptable. And as a DM, I'm not necessarily going to run a whole campaign that has an adventure that takes place in this, you know, in-between border realm between the plane of earth and the elemental plane of fire. In fact, I might not even want to dip into the elemental plane of fire, but I might want to include the Azer in my world. So is that possible? As a DM, can I just take the Azer ideas and put them in my world? Absolutely. Um, you could have a setting, any setting, that has mountains, and one or more of those mountains might be volcanic in nature. And maybe in your setting, wherever you choose to put this adventure, the volcanoes have been dormant for quite a long time until very recently when one of them exploded. Now, that could of course bring great peril to neighboring settlements, towns, villages, even cities. Um, that could enact its own call for heroes to go and examine and find out what happened, which in turn could lead to an adventure where they're exploring this mountain range and the volcanic range carefully, of course, and they come upon caverns that lead deep into and through the volcanic passes where the party discovers this outpost, this colony of Azer. So right there, I've taken their, their root idea and modified it to suit whatever my need is. Now, 
as a DM, you kind of have to choose. Are the Azer going to be enemies? Are they going to be bad guys who have settled this colony within this volcanic range of these mountains near these other um, civilizations? Are they going to be bad guys who are aiming to destroy those civilizations and expand their colonies through their, you know, the interconnecting tunnels that connect the different volcanic mountains? Or are they neutral? Maybe they came here because they were stranded here. Uh, maybe there was some planar gate that was opened between the elemental plane of fire and where they live on the borderlands that sucked them in and now they've been here for a long time. And they're just trying to survive and maybe the volcanic eruption wasn't actually on purpose. Maybe they're trying to stop the volcanic eruption from happening because there's actually a greater evil involved. Maybe there's some super powerful fire-based elemental creature or fire giants living in the volcano that were sleeping and have been awoken. And that's what caused the volcanic outburst. Maybe there's some kind of dragon who's, you know, a red dragon that was slumbering in this dormant volcano and has since awoken because of something the human and demi-human settlements had done. So you can transplant this concept into your own game world and open up a, a whole realm of adventure possibilities. Let's continue. Enemies of the Ifrit. Long ago, the Ifrit and the Azers were allies. <clears throat> Azers helped create the city of Brass, forging the home of the Ifrit into one of the most wondrous places in creation. When the Azers had finished their work, the Ifrit betrayed them, making a failed attempt to enslave the Azers so as to protect the secrets of the city. Despite occasional raids and skirmishes, however, the two sides have so far refrained from all-out conflict. The Azers believe that only the threat of them revealing the hidden ways into the city of Brass keeps the Ifrit in check. So this goes back to kind of the inherited story thread of D&D lore with the city of Brass. Um, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with using that. I, I want to step back a moment because you, you could absolutely create a scenario, uh, especially if you have a setting where you might have a freet interacting with, you know, uh, a civilization. Um, take, for example, uh, Kalimshan in the Forgotten Realms. So, you know, maybe your adventurers find their way down the coast and they, they arrive in Kalimshan, they go on some adventures, and as they get to kind of higher level, they find out that one of the political factions that's active in Kalimshan is really secretly serving an Efreet. And then through their investigations into that to thwart their evil activities, they find out that there's this colony of Azer uh, in the mountains in Kalimshan who have been hiding out from the Efreet, and the, the Azer are actually potential allies against the Efreet. So there's yet another way where you could take the, the established kind of lore and put your own spin on it and then enact that in your game. Masters of Metals and Gems. Azers are masterful artisans and create beautiful works for the gems and precious metals found in their volcanic habitat. They rate the value of such treasures above all other things, sometimes dispatching parties across the plains to seek out rare metals and gemstones. When Azers are called by magic to the material plane, it is typically to help forge an elaborate magic item or work of art. And then the last little note they have here is living fire, and Azer doesn't require food, drink, or sleep. That last chunk there about the precious gems and being summoned is yet another potential story thread for you DMs. Maybe there's a really bad wizard who summoned these Azer to complete the forging of a set of powerful, like, wondrous item artifact magic level things, right? Maybe some amazing adamantium scepter imbued with the power of the elemental plane of fire, or whatever. And that wizard betrayed the Azer, and therefore the Azer, you know, maybe destroyed the wizard's tower and fled, right? Now, you could twist that in a number of different ways as a DM. You could make the Azer the good guys who got betrayed by the bad wizard, or maybe the wizard wasn't evil. Maybe the wizard was a good guy trying to forge this thing, but an Efreet found out about it and then thwarted the plan. And basically the Azer are the only people who know the real truth and more importantly, know the location 
of this powerful adamantium, wondrous item, artifact level rod of banishment, which would have been created to banish the Afrit. I just came up with that. So point is, is that you can, you can take either this kind of established lore, or you could pull the Azer out and plant them into your own world. Um, here's another idea. What if the Azer in your world setting are indeed very rare, but they didn't used to be? Maybe in your world setting, the Azer were as common as dwarves, okay? But they, over eons of time, became more reclusive and secretive because they retained knowledge of forging magical items of great power um, that others had lost, and other people wanted that knowledge and had hunted them down and killed them for it until the Azer were a much smaller population, and now they guard their secrets. And maybe your party of heroes has figured out a way to diplomatically ask the Azer for their assistance to forge armor and weapons to fight off some baneful, epic-level foe in your campaign setting. So I think that, number one, when you think of things like alignment, these creatures don't have to be good or evil. They could be either, or they could be neutral, depending on how you are choosing to put them into your setting and what kind of adventures you're going to use. All right, let's run through the stat block. So Azer are medium elemental. They are listed as lawful neutral. Um, but again, I would just ignore the alignment and focus really on how they function in your adventure or in your campaign. Armor class is 17, hit points 39, speed 30, pretty average stats, decent strength. Um, they are immune to fire and poison. They have condition immunities. Um, they have uh, the languages of Ignan. That's the fire-based language. They are only considered a challenge rating two. That, that's, that means each individual one. So again, that's scalable. As, a, as in with all of my advice related to monsters, you are the DM, you can scale the situation or the encounter or the adventure or the campaign setting. One of these is challenge rating two. Um, 40 of them up against a bunch of characters would be a lot more challenging. So, you know, you could just change the numbers. You could boost their hit points. You could give them um, higher armor class. You could give them, you know, better weapon attacks. All right, let's look at their um, special racial abilities. Heated body, a creature that touches the Azer or hits it with a melee attack while within five feet of it takes five fire damage, 1d10. If you wanted to scale that up, you can make it 2d10, 3d10, whatever. Heated weapons. When the Azer hits with a me metal melee attack, it deals an extra 1d6 fire damage. Again, you can make that an extra 2d6 if you have a more powerful party. Illumination. The Azer sheds bright light in a 10-foot radius and dim light for an additional 10 feet. That's just kind of a cool feature. So again, these are great, uh, but often overlooked um, elementals because they, they have a lot of potential storyline that you can add into your adventures or your campaign even. Um, you can make them really have a very important function within you know, the, the politics of the region. Maybe you have them less important politically, but more important for something that they possess. As I mentioned before, some suggestions like a lost knowledge of forging a specific kind of thing. Um, maybe in your campaign setting, adamantium is very rare. And to have an adamantine weapon um, is extremely rare. Maybe in your campaign setting, the only people who know the secret of forging adamantine armor and weapons are the Azer. Or that could apply to mithril, whatever. But, you know, you as a DM can define what these guys are important for, what they do, what secrets they possess, and how they function in your gaming world. And again, I think, you know, for a challenge rating to um, encounter, this, this could be amazing. And it could add like a little bit of diversity and kind of shake up um, the encounter so that maybe 
your group is not just bored fighting the same, you know, kinds of creatures over and over again. So hopefully this has been a little bit helpful and has given you some insights into how you can use the Azer in your campaign. If you like this video and um, you have any other springboard ideas about how you or other people could use the Azer, go ahead and comment below and let us know what your ideas are. Or if you've actually used the Azer in your campaign, share the story, comment below. Um, I find that my subscribers have a lot of community here and we like sharing stories about how we've done things or how we've done things differently from each other. And that's kind of the whole point of what we're doing is to, to share helpful tips with other DMs or with new DMs about how things could be done or how they could be used differently. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and liking, and we'll see you next time.